If you want me to continue with my work, it is crucial to support the channel via Patreon. Moreover, make sure to subscribe to Bobby's Perspective on Rumble. All the links are in the description box below. May Allah bless you all. Alright guys, welcome back to the channel. If you're new, my name is Bobby. Super interesting video today, guys. As a new revert to Islam, I'm gonna check out the Baha'i Faith on the channel Drew Binsky. Before you get scared off, guys, no, it's not that I'm leaving Islam and now I'm looking into different religions. Quite the opposite. I've been challenged by other religious practitioners on my channels, for example, people from the Baha'i Faith or Hindus even, to look into their religions and give them a fair uh, assessment and to share my perspective on those religious practices. Guys, before we start the video, as always, if you enjoy the content, leave me a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed already, guys, please do so. And if you want to support this channel via Patreon or via merch, all the links are in the description box below. Thank you so much for your ongoing support, guys. And now with no further ado, let's have a look. Hi, I'm Rain Wilson. And today we're going to learn Rain. a little bit about the Baha'i faith. Okay. That's what I'm here for. Back in 2015, when I was on a solo backpacking trip around India, I found myself at this beautiful white temple in Delhi looks that looks like looked something Opera like the House, Sydney Opera House yeah, in the exactly. shape of a flower. <laughs> a very kind Indian man told me that the temple belongs to the Baha'i faith, a religion that I had never heard of before. But as I continued I to travel that. across 191 countries, I kept seeing more and more of these unique temples, like in Uganda, Germany, and Panama. I met countless Baha'is who introduced me to their faith and I find it so beautiful and uplifting that I wanted to tell you all about it in this video because I think many of you guys out there can resonate. How would you explain okay. Baha'i to someone who has no idea what it is? There's only one God. God educates humanity by sending divine teachers every once in a while. The That's Buddha. Islam. Jesus, Muhammad, these are some of these divine teachers. They're essentially teaching one religion. So there's one God, one religion that is gradually unfolding, like chapters in a course book. And ah, okay. how Allah. That's where it basically differs because up until he said it is gradually unfolding like chapters, he was describing Islam. As Muslims, we believe that the message is always the same and it's never changing. God is never changing, therefore, he reveals one message. Worship one God alone, your God is one. That is pretty much it. That is Islam. However, the way that he described it here is that the message is unfolding over time. And this is an argument that the Christians give as well of course. At first we all thought that God is just one, but now all of a sudden he is a trinity. He is three in one. Like that you open up the room for interpretation and for gradual change in religion that then in the end can be of course detrimental and take people away from the monotheistic worship just as yet again the Christians have done. So I'm very curious to hear how the Baha'i message is different from Islam. Is the most recent of these divine teachers okay. and his, his teachings are totally relevant to what's going on in the world today. Me too, you know, Black Lives Matter, economic Terrible. disparity, of, you know, between rich All and those poor, are fake. environment. You know, there's None a quote that says, to be a Baha'i means to love the world, to love humanity and try to serve it, to work for universal okay. peace and universal Oh, uh, that's quite interesting. Coming from a Christian background, we always used to say that we do not love the world. We love God. We love the creator. We are waiting for the afterlife and we are not in love with this creation. And the same, of course, applies to Islam here. We are not in love with the dunya. We are waiting for the akhirah. So, so that's where this service quite a bit. is so central to the Baha'i revelation, understanding that all the teachings of the Baha'i faith revolve around the oneness of humanity, this belief in this one God that loves us all, this one progressive religion. Exactly, it's a and, progressive religion. Um, this that's one the main difference human here. family. So the Baha'i faith is all about ridding the world of all our prejudices like racism, sexism, nationalism, and religious prejudice, and, and understanding the true oneness that, that just humanity is one human family. But that doesn't make any sense whatsoever. If you say you're getting rid of religious prejudice, then you wouldn't have to talk about any religion at all anymore. However, you are presenting the message of the Baha'i, and I therefore have to think that you believe that the Baha'i's message is superior to other religions. Does that make sense? 
the Baha'i faith is an independent world religion founded in Iran in 1844. It has been described as the youngest of all the world's major religions and it has a quickly growing following. So how does one practice Baha'i? So to be a Baha'i um, is to be a Christian or a Jew or a Muslim. The way I like to say it is this, I'm a Jew as long as I can also be a Christian. I'm a Christian as long as I can also be a Muslim. And I'm a Muslim as long as I can also be a Baha'i. I love it. And I'm a Hindu and a Buddhist too along the way. So Yeah, okay, those things are mutually exclusive. And what he is displaying here is a thing called interfaith. And interfaith, the interfaith movement, is the enemy of every particular religion. Because it tells you that no religion is right and you can be all of them at once. But this is yet again an absolute contradiction. Because think about it. The Jews do not believe in Jesus whatsoever. The Christians, on the other hand, believe that Jesus is God, right? So therefore, Christianity and Judaism are very, very different from each other. They are mutually exclusive. And of course, the same applies to Christianity and Islam, because the Christians do believe that Jesus is God. They do believe that God is a trinity. And the Muslims do not believe that at all. Quite the opposite. They believe that this is a sin, right? Very, very simple. So Jesus is a messenger within Islam. All of those messages are mutually exclusive. And therefore, we have to ask, ourselves which religion is right which religion has the truth claim the truth with a capital t if you will in islam we do believe that there is only one god and one truth of course and that truth is islam and it is never changing islam being the submission to that one god we do believe that every messenger has been sent with the same message and islam has been perfected there is no change in islam therefore no it is not a progressive religion whatsoever. This is why it is perfect. God is perfect. His religion is perfect. It doesn't need to change. And therefore, new social issues do not interest us as Muslims the way that they interest you here. Oh, we're going to talk about BLM. We're going to talk about LGBTQ. We are all one big family. No, Islam is about the truth. We as Muslims believe Islam is true. And therefore, Judaism, Christianity, Buddhism, Hinduism, all of it is wrong. To practice really? being a Baha'i? Yes. Very it's bigoted. really pretty simple. We read some writings in the morning and the evening. Plus 95 Allahu Pa. Allahu Pa is God is most glorious. And we say that 95 Allah times Allah a day. Allahu Pa, Allahu Pa, Allahu Pa, Allahu Pa, Allahu Pa. That's part of our kind of daily ritual. We say a prayer uh, between noon and sunset. The, you know, the Muslims bow five times a day to Mecca. The Baha'is just say one very short prayer. I bear witness, O oh my God, that Thou hast created me to know Thee and to worship Thee. I testify at this moment to my powerlessness, yeah, really to like Thy might, from to my poverty, to Thy wealth, twist. that there is none other God but Thee, the help in peril, the self-subsisting. That's it. That's all. That's it. Morning, Two. Morning and night? No, just between noon and sunset. What is the text of the Baha'i? So obviously we have the Bible and the Torah and the... Quran. What is it called in Baha'i faith? So our most holy book is called the kitab i -Aqdas. And now with the Baha'i faith, it's not like we were just given one book. We have we have many books. Um, so we don't limit ourselves to just reading and studying one. You know, we, we have thousands of prayers and thousands of texts. How many Baha'is can we find in the world? About I mean, for Muslims, it's not only the Quran either. If you want to study different books, you can, right? Starting with Hadith literature. Officially, maybe six or seven million, but unofficially, there's probably closer to 10. In fact, Baha'i is considered to be the second most widespread religion in the world, as there are members After in Islam. 236 unique countries and territories. What I really love about the Baha'i temples is that every one of them is open to every human being, regardless of race, Mosques religion, too. gender. Churches it's open too. to all, and that is such a beautiful thing. So you grew up Jewish. I did. When did you become interested in Baha'i and, and convert? I guess, do you call it convert? Uh, we call it declare. declare. And because what you don't do with Baha'i is you don't abandon your religion. So in, like for example, I was raised Jewish, I'm not saying that Judaism is wrong. In fact, I'm saying Judaism, Judaism is right, and I'm a Baha'i. 
What does Ah, uh, so compassionate, man. If Judaism is right, just stay a Jew. You don't have to become a Baha'i whatsoever. And before that, you mentioned as well that you are a Jew, you're a Muslim, you're a Christian. Don't let me repeat the whole thing yet again. Those religions are mutually exclusive. How do you justify this? A it's ridiculous. It doesn't make any sense. Means you. One thing that it means to it's me... It's like saying, I'm practicing Jiu-Jitsu now, but I'm going to tell you, you know what? I am a karateka as well. I'm a judoka. I'm a boxer. I'm a wrestler. As long long as I can be a Jiu-Jitsu guy as well. Am I practicing all of those other martial arts? No, I am not. I'm practicing just Jiu-Jitsu. So therefore I cannot claim the other martial arts. And of course you cannot claim that you are just a Baha'i as long as you are Buddhist, Hindu. Man, this makes my head hurt. One thing that it means to me is that world peace, it's, it's not just a, a what if or a possibility, it is inevitable. And it will happen one day, and as a Baha'i, it is my job to have... Uh, yeah, this for me sounds like an extremely false doctrine, because what they are trying to establish here is an utopia on Earth. I do not believe in a utopia on Earth. I do believe in giving charity, I do believe in doing good. However, I do not believe in salvation on this planet. World peace, will it ever be a reality? I personally do not think so, because we will experience our eternal peace, our eternal bliss, in the Ahira, in the afterlife. This world is nothing but a test. And to serve and bring about. It's very feminine. To be a Baha'i really just means to be of service to humanity. So Baha'is, wherever you go around uh, the world. But if that is the truth, and sorry for interrupting yet again, guys, if you just have to be in service to humanity, then just be in service to humanity. So every time I'm giving in charity, for example, I become a Baha'i. are trying What's to make happening? the world a better place. As a Baha'i, we see everything as reflecting God, all of God's creation, every living okay. thing. And we are the caretakers. As humans, we're the highest created thing. We are higher than animals. We are higher than plants. And we're in charge of the world. And so we must love animals, not less because we're higher than them, but more so because the animals can't defend themselves. No, he's we, a vegan. As, as you he's know, we're the greatest predator. I hear it. And instead of being the greatest predator, we should be loving and kind to all the yeah, animals. Yeah, yeah, being yeah. A Baha'i, vegan it, it comforts me. It provides solace and hope. It confirms me and, 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 and what I do and what I love to do and, and inspire, it shines light on the path I need to take and what I need to do to get there. We definitely need to work to be more internationally cooperative. Right. And uh, the more that we can have um, treaties and cooperation and love and trust built up between countries, then that more that war can be put on the back burner. As you've already heard me say a million times, my single biggest realization from visiting almost every country in the world is that every human being is the same. After what? learning that this is all- You traveled the world and what you came up with is that every human being is the same. That's absolutely ridiculous, man. And I'm not talking about physical differences. Obviously, you have a ginger beard and this guy is black. I'm not talking about that. Every human being is absolutely different. Of course, we have common baseline similarities, but we are absolutely different from each other. How did you come to that conclusion? Also, the core That's belief crazy. of the Baha'i faith I am looking forward to reading and learning more about it on my spiritual journey around the world. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope Thank you, you learned a thing or two and please Not comment really. below with your thoughts. Have an awesome day and I will see you later. Okay, inshallah. All right, guys, and this is it for today's video. Beware of the soft spoken, compassionate people that will tell you we are all one, we have no differences, we are all the same. Like this, you can never find truth. Like this, you enter subjectivism, where your truth is your truth and my truth is my truth. Hey, as long as you don't hurt me, anything goes. This is how you justify same sex marriage, for example. This is how you justify all the perversion that we see in this this world. Love is love. Do whatever you want. As long as it feels good, we all gonna have fun. We're all a big family. And this is why I am opposed to the interfaith movement. Actually, even back in the day when I was a Christian, I was extremely opposed to the interfaith movement. And only like that, I could actually compare religions. I did not say, hey, I'm a Christian, I'm a Muslim, I'm a Buddhist, I'm a Hindu. We are all the same. No. Back then, I took the stance that Islam is wrong and Christianity is correct. So, then I directly compared those religions. I read the whole Bible, I read the whole Quran, I compared them and I saw for myself what is right and what is wrong. 
if I am right with my opinion and you hold a different opinion, then somebody here must be wrong. It doesn't work otherwise, don't you understand? If I say this microphone here is black and you say no, it is white, then only one of us can be right. That's it. Is it black or is it white? Now we're going to get a second party that will check the color and ultimately we will deduct truth. Ultimately, objectively, as much as we can, we will come to the conclusion what is right, what is wrong. And then ultimately we know this microphone is black and you have been wrong because your claim of white is wrong. That is it. And this is the same when it comes down to religions. People are not really religious anymore. They claim to be spiritual. And when you open up that door, anything goes. They say that all the religions are the same. But how can that be? The message of those religions is ultimately different. Don't you understand? Christianity claims that all your sins are forgiven if you accept Jesus Christ in your life. If you accept him as God and you believe that he has been crucified. Muslims do not believe in that whatsoever. And therefore, true Christians believe that Muslims are condemned to hell. Don't you understand? As I said a billion times now, they're mutually exclusive. They believe totally opposite things. Buddhism doesn't even believe in a god. Hinduism believes in one billion deities. Don't you understand that those are totally different belief systems? And that is great. Don't you understand that that is absolutely fantastic? Those are different belief systems. They do not have to be merged into a mush. And like this, we can objectively discuss which claim makes sense. We are not all the same. If you look at the world, you said we are all the same people. No, we are not. I'm living in Asia right now and I love living in Asia because guess what? We have Asian people here. Asian people are super nice. They're very friendly, to me at least. And I appreciate being amongst Asians. But I appreciate it because they're different. They're different from Westerners. My wife comes from Africa. She is different to me as well. Guess what? Race is a reality as well. Gender is a reality as well. There are only two genders. But if you are affirming nowadays, you will come to the conclusion that there are a billion genders. Somebody is right and somebody is wrong. Yet again, this is the doctrine of devils. Truly is. Because you are making everything relative. Instead of looking at what is true, what is wrong, what is right, you're discarding all of it. And you're luring people in with compassion by telling them falsehood. We should never unite under falsehood, but under truth. And truth will always be divisive. All right, guys, but this is it for today's video. If you liked it, leave the thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed already, guys, please do so. And if you want to support this channel via Patreon, for example, all the links are in the description box below. Thank you so much for your ongoing support, guys. And as always, may God bless you all. Much love and peace.